welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda, and today I am here to talk about Learn to Buy Heart by Emma Donahue. <sighs> Emma Donahue has a pretty large backlist of books, but this is only the second book of hers that I have read, the first one being Pull of the Stars, um, which is about the Spanish flu and had either the tremendously good or the tremendously bad luck of being released in the spring of 2020. <laughs> um, this one, however, is set in the 19th century in a girls' boarding school in Yorkshire. Now, this is based on real people, and I did not realize that going in. So it does assume some pre-knowledge of a notable historical character, and that character is Anne Lister. I knew about Anne Lister because I had heard an episode of Stuff You Missed in History Class about her, which I will link below. Um, but I had forgotten her name. So I didn't realize until I had finished this book and read the author's note and then something sounded familiar and I went back and read up about her that I realized that this is who this was. No, having some pre-knowledge of Anne Lister um, is not really important until you get to the very end of the book. So if you are interested in reading this book, which to, you know, to cut to the chase, I did like this book and would recommend it. Um, I would suggest going and just reading her Wikipedia page if you don't know about her. But Anne Lister was considered the uh, first modern lesbian, and I'm not sure what made her modern instead of pre-modern. I don't know. But she was also a diarist, and she's she left thousands of diary pages, which is how we know so much. Um, she's also the, the subject of the television show Gentleman Jack, although that takes place at a much later point in her life than the um, events of this book. That being said, this book is not about Anne Lister. This book is about a girl named Eliza Rain. So Eliza Rain was the girl with whom Anne Lister had an, an affair. And I assume, I assume it's portrayed in the book, and I think the assumption is correct, that it was her first love affair. They were both 14 years old. Um, and this is in a boarding school in New York. So let me talk a little about Eliza Rain, because again, she was a, a real person. Uh, she was the illegitimate and biracial daughter of what they called a company man or uh, an employee of the East India Company. She was born in India and her father had her and her older sister um, sent to England when she was six and her sister was eight. And uh, her father died on a subsequent journey to England. So both girls were actually left with a pretty large fortune, but they were illegitimate and they were biracial, which were not things that were really accepted in upper class English society in the Georgian era. Um, so at this point, Eliza Rain is at a girl's school, as is her sister, who plays a very minor role in this story, is in this. And she's always had a room by herself. But one day, the new student, a girl named Ann Lister, moves in to her room and they strike up a friendship and then a romantic relationship. The, the arc of their romantic relationship in this book is pretty predictable, which is actually fine because the book itself is quite interesting. Um, Donahue, I, from her first book and this one, has a fantastic voice. I love her, the language she uses. Um, it's very poetic, but it's not overly frilly. Uh, so we ha this is a beautifully written story, even if it is predictable. And of course, Donnie who has no control over that because it's she's basing this on real events. But she gives us a really great view into a girls' school of Georgian England. And if you were to ask me what I thought or where did I get my views before reading this book about girls' schools in um, 19th century England, I would have said Jane Eyre, um, which is not a good view of girls' schools. Jane Eyre, fabulous book, but she did not go to a good school. <laughs> read Jane Eyre if you haven't already. You know, you, you know. And um, so this is a different kind of schooling experience. Uh, the girls in the school are from at least middle-class families. The school is very, um, yes, they educate them, but really the goal is to make them marriageable. And, um, you know, generally the instructors are kind to the students, although, and Donahue <laughs> describes like the the system of of discipline in the school which is crazy it's like at each week they go into this room like during the week they're given um merits or demerits you know you get a demerit for for inattention and you get a merit for 
uh, etiquette or whatever. And they have to report like how many merits and demerits they can get. And then they can like cash them out sort of, or like have them cancel them out or they can save them up. And if they have to like earn off, work off a demerit, they have to do things like dress like they're like uh, in the younger class or do other weird things. It's very strange. Um, but things like that are what really kept me going with this book. Cause I was like, that is really interesting. Um, we also get a real view into the lives of the girls in this school. Um, they're teenage girls. And I think teenage girls have always been teenage girls the world over. So you do see some things that you would normally see in a, uh, in a group of teenage girls. But you also see things like the games they played, what they did for recreation. All of this I found fascinating. Um, and it really kept me going, even though, you know, the arc, the, the story arc was pretty predictable. The other thing that made the story so good, even though she took a predictable story, was inter well interjected um, within this this narrative of the girls at school it, are letters ten years later from an adult Eliza to Ann Lister, um, and it is very clear it is said in the letters, um, and it is clear that Eliza is in a some sort of mental institution, and not because she had what probably would have been called then an unnatural um, attachment to <laughs> to someone which putting someone in mental institute for, yeah, that would have happened. But no, Eliza clearly has some kind of legitimate mental illness. It's, it's very obvious in these letters. So I'm reading this and I'm enjoying everything I'm getting about the school, but I'm also like, ooh, what happens? Why is Eliza, what happened to Eliza? What triggered her going through the whole thing? And yes, you do get a resolution to it. And that is where knowing about Ann Lister comes into play, um, which I did not know about Ann Lister. So I'm like, okay, yeah. But then once I had all the pieces together, it made sense. So um, that's pretty much this book, the story of this book. But I, man, this book, I was thinking about this book. I could not get this book out of my head as I started reading it. It was a little slow to begin. I will say that. Um, it took me a little while to get into it. But once I got in, like I was thinking about this book all the time. Um, and that is a sign of a really good book. Um, I definitely want to read more by Emma Donahue. Um, I do have it. I have at least room on one of my e-readers, which is surprising because that's the one she's most known for and I haven't read it yet. Um, but I just, this is a great view of, uh, you know, a slice of society. You don't, I mean, you do get Georgian girl schools. You get that. But this view of it, the LGBTQ side, is not something you get very often. Um, I really enjoyed this. I would highly recommend this to anyone who kind of likes historical fiction. Again, if you don't know about Ann Lister, listen to the podcast that I'm gonna link below or just check out our Wikipedia page, you'll be fine. Um, or watch Gentleman Jack, that would probably work too. I don't know, I haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think this is a great book. My fear is that it's a little bit too niche to really take off the way, say, Room did, but um, it's definitely worth the reading. So again, highly recommended it. I gave it an A. Um, I probably would have given it a, a plus had it not taken me a little time to get into it. Um, I cannot hold the need for any kind of pre-knowledge against the book um, because again, that is that is something that's a lack, lacking in my knowledge base. Um, but I would just advise someone who wants to read it to, to do just a little bit of homework beforehand. Um, but anyways, otherwise, this is a great book. Read this book that's Learned by Heart by Emma Donahue. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.